Um, our song service now will be followed by Lucy. Good morning, church. Good morning. If you are happy and you know, can you say amen? Amen. If you are ready to praise the Lord, can you say amen? Amen. And so the first song that we are singing this morning is In a Little While We Are Going Home. <clears throat> May I um, ask the congregation to stand? I know we've been sitting for a while. Just to get <coughs> the <coughs> Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way. In a little while we're going on. For the night will end in the everlasting day. In a little while we're going home. In a little while, in a little while. So many of you here this morning. Did you all sleep well? Yes. Yeah, God is good. 
Um, can we all open uh, um, Psalms 5, verse 1 to 5, or 1 to 3? Did I say amen, please? It reads, Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee I will pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning, will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. Amen. So this morning we will direct our prayers to God, as we have our youth here preaching to us. And maybe you'll be blessed. Amen. Um, can I call up Adrian to lead us in prayer, please? <coughs> uh, Ruth, and pray for us. This is a prayer retreat, amen? Amen. amen. I want to emphasize prayer um, and um, I think it's one thing that, that we lack a lot of wherever we are in our churches, in our homes. We don't pray enough, and especially for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Um, just at this moment, I asked um, Abraham to come with a young person so we could lead out in a little bit of prayer. There was a quotation that he found in the Spirit of Prophecy. I think maybe we were going to share it with you so that you, you hear the burden of our hearts and the desire that we have. For God to work in our young people and with us. We've got young people here speaking, sometimes you hear them saying things and you're like, oh, I don't think that's quite right. But I think the main important thing is that God is using his young people to finish his work. And that's, that's the heart's burning desire that I have. Abraham, are you ready to come forward? Just a minute. I just want to take about five, ten minutes so that we can once again <coughs> Take a moment to pray. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let us kneel down and pray. Hosea 4 verse 6 reads that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now do we want knowledge in our lives? Do we want the heavenly knowledge of God? Uh, so now we will join Koda as he will preach for us and feed us more knowledge. May God bless it. Good morning church. Good morning. Have you all been blessed Amen. from the previous speaker? Um, Joy, if your Bible is with you. Amen. <clears throat> I want you to open in the book of Ephesians. Uh, 
it's in the morning, but you need to open the scriptures. Amen? Amen. If you open Ephesians chapter 3, starting reading from verse 8, it says, Are you all there? He says, unto me, who I am less than the least of all sins, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Paul here is, Paul here is talking about his mission, what he is meant to do. He's saying, I'm here to preach the what? The unsearchable riches of Christ. You know, uh, we've been told that we are students and we are learning, so I need people who will respond. That also gives me confidence. Amen? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so he said, I'm here to preach the what? The unsearchable riches of Christ. Are you all there? Are you all in Ephesians chapter 8? Chapter 3, verse 8. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> he said, I want to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And we know that one of the unsearchable riches he's talking about is found in verse 6. Where he says that, where he says that, that the, de- that the Gentiles should be follow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the, by this, by the gospel. So he also wants to preach about what? About the Gentiles. Telling the Jews that the Gentiles, they also can come to repentance and they can, they can, they have got, they can go to heaven ju- just as the Jews. But I'm so interested in verse 9. If you open, if you turn your pages, verse 9 it says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which was from the beginning of the world, hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus. Paul here is saying that I want to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. But verse 9, it goes deeper and says, He wants to make all men see the what? The fellowship of the mystery which was from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. Which means he's about to tell us, I mean, he's about to tell us something that we should know about the mystery of God. He says in verse 10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Are you ready to learn about the manifold wisdom of God? Amen. Um, I'm going to pray now, and I want you to pray for me that as I speak, the Lord will put his word in my mouth. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, I want to thank you for waking us up and for this blessed morning. As I speak your words, Please, Lord, let it be your words, not my words. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, We're going to open from the book of Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter. Matthew chapter 13. (coughs) Verse 24. 227. Reading from verse 24, it says, For they shall, oh, sorry, Matthew 13, yes, Matthew 13, verse 24. And he said, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed, which sowed good seeds in his field. There's a certain man, he sowed what? Good seeds in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou sow good seeds in thy field? From whence then hath he tears? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Who thou then, that we go and gather them up? What did they say? But he said, Nay, let while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. 
let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in the bundles to bend them. But gather the wheat into my... I want to explain what he was trying to say in verse 37. He said, he that soweth good seed, he that soweth good seed is the son of... Who is the son of man? Amen. The food is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. We know from the beginning that God, he created the heaven and the And he created man in his own likeness and he put Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. And everything was good. He says, if you read, um, after, if you read in Genesis 1, after he had created anything, he says that it was good. After creating Adam and Eve, he said it was very right. Let's continue. Verse uh, 39. It says, the, um, I mean, verse, yeah, starting from verse 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy has sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. We are being told here that there is a certain field, which is the earth. God planted good seed, but after some time, the enemy came and sowed bad seeds. And we are hearing that the good seeds that the children of, you are not with me, you are not with me. Matthew chapter 13. 13. Oh, one three. One three. Thank you. Thank you. We are now on verse thirty-eight. Thank you. He says the uh, the good seeds are the children of the, <laughs> and the tears are the children of the, <laughs> and the enemy that sowed <laughs> is the devil. Right. Good. Sin resulted. And the angels saw that something is wrong. How come sin now exists? What happened is, after God he put everything right, the enemy came and saw it. But we are hearing that the servants, they came to God in the ark. How come now they are tears? And we are told that these servants, they are the angels. So is it possible that the angels, they are coming to God asking what really happened that the sin resulted now in, on earth? They have got some kind of questions. They are not really understanding as well what really happened. Is this true? Because the angels, yes, after, after, after God had planted everything, right? There, the, 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 there was good seed, but now bad seed resulted. And now the angels, they are coming and they are asking, how come now there is bad seed? How come now there is all these things which is not right? After all, God, you created everything nice, everything peaceful. If you read from Ellen G. White, um, I think this is Desire of Ages, uh, chapter 79, he says, And while love to God was supreme, love for one another was confiding and unselfish. There was no note of discord to mar the celestial harmonies, but a change came over this happy state. There was one who perverted the freedom that God had granted his creatures. This was the devil. Sin resulted because of the devil. The enemy has done this. That's what I titled my message today. We're going to learn more about this enemy. Um, to learn more about this enemy... Because the angels, they didn't really understand his nature. Is this true? From what we've just read. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn more his character, and we're going to start deep to see what was really happening in heaven in the beginning of the world. Open with me to Ezekiel chapter 28. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 28. Reading from verse 14. Actually, let's start from verse 18. He says, Thou hast been in Eden, 
the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, and the onyx, the jasper, sorry about the pronunciation, I'm trying, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbinco, <laughs> and gold, the workmanship, the workmanship of the tablet and the, of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Ellen Jewa says, thou hast been in the, in the Eden of the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Thou art the anointed cherub that covering, and I have set thee so thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast per was perfect in thy ways from the day he was created. Of Lucifer the Lord says, Thou stillest up the sum of full, full wisdom and perfect in beauty. We see this in Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 4. Lucifer had been the covering cherub. He had stood in the light of God present. And he had been the highest of all created beings. And he had been foremost in revealing God's purpose to the universe. This is from Desire of Ages, page 758. So we can see that Lucifer, you stood before the presence of God. If you really want to understand what's the character of God, you can go and ask Lucifer because he stood in the presence of the light of God. So he knew what the character of God is. God is love. He could see his light, you could see all his glory from his face because God was in his presence. But he seen which is one thing which is interesting. He says he had been the highest of all created beings and had been the foremost in revealing God's purposes to the universe. He was one of the, he was actually the respected, the number one angels in heaven. And because he was in that position, his heart was lifted up. Verse 15 says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in God created Lucifer. And Lucifer was meant to be an example to other angels. All other angels, they looked up to him. And what they saw, they saw the character of God. But Lucifer, because he was at that position, he actually fell because his heart was lifted up. We're going to actually try to study more how come his heart was lifted up. Where was he trying to get to? We're going to look at all this, stuff, um, all this information if we've got time. If we open Isaiah chapter 13 and 14, he says, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14 says, For thou hast said in, in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. We can see that God created, actually it's Jesus Christ, he created Lucifer, and he put Lucifer at this position above all other created beings. And now, when God put Lucifer in this position, Lucifer, he thought in his heart, I want to ascend from this position to that position. But the Lord is saying that, and he wanted to do all this, not with love, but he wanted to do all this out of, own self, out of selfishness. He wanted to do all this because of his selfish ambitions. And he, th he said, I want to ascend from this position that Jesus Christ has put in, me in to this position. What is that position? We're going to see what was that position. But the Lord is saying that even though you want to ascend from this position to that position, I'll bring you down from that position to that position, even to the bottomless pit. That's what the Lord is saying. Though all his glory was from God, this mighty angel came to regard it as pertaining to himself, not content with his position. Though honored above the heavenly host, he ventured to covet homage due to alone to the Creator. Instead of seeking 
to make God supreme in affections and alliance of all created beings, it was his in devout to secure their service and loyalty to himself. You know, in our lives, sometimes we can be like Lucifer. Because of our own selfish ambitions, we are trying to move from this position to that position. You know, the Bible says, unless you, if you want to follow me, you need to deny, you need to deny self. Because of our own selves, because of our own desires, we want to, um, want to achieve quite a lot. I don't know what are some of those things that you want to achieve. And you end up doing like Lucifer. End up being selfish, self-serving, self-indulgent, self-seeking, self-centeredness. Yet the Lord is saying, if you come to me and look up to me and put me in you and, um, and, uh, and live in me, the Lord is saying that I will change all those things, those self-centeredness, all those selfishness, I will change it to Instead of self-saving, you become, uh, you have a life of service. You save Jesus Christ. Instead of self-indulgence, you have a life of simplicity. Instead, instead of self-gratification, you have a life of sacrifice. Instead of self-seeking, you will surrender. Instead of self-centeredness, you have, you submit. That's what the Lord wants us today. He doesn't want us to have this character of Lucifer, this character of selfishness, and this character of trying to achieve that we, 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 we forget about God, just want to achieve higher and higher and higher. The Lord is saying, no, have a life of doing what is good to other people, not just looking up to yourself. We're going to move on because our time is going. So what exactly was the problem with Lucifer? Because God created him. And he was at this position, which was very good, and everything was good. Uh, you know, we read from, from the self ages that everything in heaven was perfect. Every created thing, it was singing. I mean, the, the love of God was illustrated from everything that God had created. So what actually was his problem? His problem was Jesus Christ. Why was it Jesus Christ? We're going to read from uh, the quotes uh, from Ellen G. White and trying to see who was actually his problem. He says, the king of the universe, who is the king of the universe? Who is the king of the universe? I'm hearing God, I'm hearing Jesus. The king of the universe, the Ellen G. White means God the Father. The king of the universe showed the true position of the Son and show the relationship he sustained to all created beings. The Son of God shared the Father's throne, the glory of the internal, self-existent one. In circled both, about the throne gathered the holy angels, a vast unnumbered throne, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. The most exalted angels as ministers and subjects, rejoicing in the light that fell upon from the de from the deity before the assembled inhabitants of heaven, the king declared that none but Christ, the only begotten of God, could fully enter into his purpose. Mm -hmm. And to him it was committed to execute the mighty counsels of his will. Mm -hmm. The Son of God yet wrought the Father's will in the creation. This is Jesus. He had created all what? All things, we, if you read from Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, he created all things. And to him, as well as to God, their homage and alliance were due. Christ was still to exercise divine power in the creation of the earth and its inhabitants. But in all this, he would not seek power or exaltation for himself. God the Father was there. Jesus was there. Lucifer was there. Lucifer was saying, I want to ascend to this position. But Jesus, did Jesus Christ say, I want to ascend above God? Did he say that? No. This is what we are hearing from 
in the spirit of prophecy, Christ was still to exercise divine power in the creation of the earth and its inhabitants, but in all he would not seek power or exaltation for himself, contrary to God's plan, but would exalt the Father's glory and execute his purpose on benefi benef beneficence and love. It's, uh, it's, so, it's, so, it's so, so much interesting. The Lucifer, I don't know why, why, why he wanted to be like Jesus Christ, but you know, because of his selfishness, he was seeing Jesus Christ at his position. God had uh, given, I mean, he had appointed Jesus Christ with some tasks to do. And because Lucifer, because of his selfish desires, he was looking uh, to Jesus Christ and he was saying, I wish I was like Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, one, two, three, one, two, three, may have got only one, two. That's what we do sometimes in life. We try to achieve some other things that we are not even meant to achieve. Why can't we just be enough with what we have? Amen. So, Ellen Jewa says, why, question this mighty angel, Lucifer, should Christ have the supremacy? Why is he honored above Lucifer? This is Lucifer asking himself, because he wants to accent. Okay. Um, after uh, telling the father that, I mean, um, if we read from uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, it says iniquity was found in his heart, isn't it? Iniquity was found in his heart. So it looked like no one else knew what was actually in Lucifer's heart. Two, probably God the Father was, you know, all the angels was around him. And when he was gazing upon his angels, he saw that that which was in Lucifer was iniquity. Probably they were singing. Praise God for more, more, more blessings flow. More blessings flow. Praise God, praise God. And Lucifer was sat there. And yes, he was also singing, but no one could see what was in his heart except God. He made him stood up and say, I've seen that which is in your heart. I've seen that you have got iniquity in your heart. You know, the law says that he is, he, his angels that are here on earth and they are recording each and every sin with terrible what? And we think that we are hiding from God. We think that um, when we do all those sorts of uh, bad things by, in our own environment, we think that we are hiding from God. The God is recording everything with terrible acceptance. <coughs> Lucifer, he fell. So then, in his state, you know, with all these minds in him, he actually started... Um, insinuating these minds in the minds of other angels. That's what he started doing. I'm going to read from the quote again from the Spirit of Prophecy. You know, it says, he began insinuating doubts concerning the laws that govern the heavenly beings. What Lucifer was doing is, he was questioning God's laws, and he was saying, you put your law, but I don't want your law. I think what I'm thinking for me to be equal with Jesus Christ will be actually better for the what? Will be actually better for what? It will be actually better for our environment. That's the way how he is presenting his information. And he is saying this to the angels, insinuating doubts into their minds. And the angels, they also started reasoning and they were like, yes. Yes, yes. It would be actually better for it to be like that. Some of them, they fell. Some of them, they didn't. They preferred to... They preferred to remain with the ways of God. But some, they fall to Lucifer. You know, when Lucifer, he presented this information to the angels, it seemed like it was fine because it was like, I'll be able to, it would be actually good for, 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 the, for, the, 
for, 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 the, for God the Father, for Jesus, and for me, and for all other angels, who will be able to do everything according to the plan, and everything will flow. But he is forgetting that this person that he is accusing is actually his creator. And the angel, some angels, they fall, and they lead to certain uh, deceptions. Even in our lives, Satan is doing the same thing. He presents unto us, you know, false information, deceiving us. And we actually think that it would be better for us to enter into this kind of sin. It would be for our benefit. But actually what would be actually happening to us is we are, fall, we are, we are actually falling into a yeah, certain trap. Now, to the angels which thought, I mean, to the angels which followed Lucifer, Ellen Jewa says, but now even the liberty which they had hitherto enjoyed was at an end, for an, abs- for an absolute ruler had been appointed them, and to his authority all must pay homage. Such were the subtle deceptions that through the wiles of Lucifer were first obtaining in the heavenly courts. These angels, you know, when Lucifer went to the angels, he told them that you'll be able to have positions. You know, in my kingdom, you'll be in my kingdom, and you'll be able to have positions. But not knowing that breaking the laws of God will be actually, they'll actually end up falling into the pit. Because we know that the laws of the God and the commandments of the God, they are a light unto our the laws of the laws of God, they are a light unto our path. And we know that if we follow God's laws, we'll be able if we follow God's laws, we'll be able to see the light. And the light will lead us unto life. But if we leave God's laws, there will be no light and we fall into the pit. So the angels, they decided to go with Lucifer. So they went with Lucifer, and we know what's the result for them. Ezekiel chapter 28, Ezekiel chapter 28 it says that uh, Lucifer was cast out of heaven. He became an outcast of heaven. Actually, before I go there, Lucifer was given an opportunity because God is so loving and so merciful. He gave Lucifer the opportunity. He said, you can actually, you can actually come back and you can regain back your position. But Lucifer, he decided to say, no, no, I don't want that. Because he was at that position. You know, sometimes in life, because we are in big positions, because we are in big positions, we are like in high positions, we think when people correct us, we'll be like, because I'm in this state, why should I follow what these people are saying? You think you are so much clever because you are in this, in this state. So Lucifer, he thought, that, what would other angels think if I turn around and go back to follow God? He thought about it because God gave him an opportunity. But he said no, and then he decided to, he decided to fall. So Lucifer, he fell. And now, um, he says, um, in Ezekiel chapter 28, that in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 17, if we can go there quickly, uh, before I finish. He says, you are set before what? He says, um, at the end, I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You know, after all this controversy, Angels, they even really didn't understand what was the character of Lucifer because he was presenting his information as nice, you know. He was presenting it as something good. But after all, they were all lies. So the angels, they actually thought Lucifer, he was presenting something good. So they didn't really understand. But the law says, I'll, prese- I'll lay thee before kings that they may be worthy. Lucifer was sent to the earth and, the, and us... 
And Lucifer was sent to the earth, and, now, and us will be able to study his character. You know, through the plan of redemption, Jesus Christ he came to the earth, and his character was revealed on the cross. That he is a merciful God and he is a loving God. And during this whole process, the character of Lucifer was also seen. That from the beginning he was a liar, a murderer, from John chapter 8, verse 43. He was truly a liar and truly a murderer. Even us as well. You know, God had to prove that his character is merciful, his character is loving. Even us as well, we have to prove to God that we are, we, we can we, we can fit for heaven. This is done through our character. If we, in our day-to-day -day lives, pray to God earnestly and pray that God will change our character, that our character will be fit for heaven, because God had to prove his character. I don't have time to, quote, uh, to read many quotes from Ellen G. White, but it says that God had to prove his character unto the whole earth, because they were not really understanding what was going on. Even us, we have to prove to, the, to, all, other, to all other people in all other universes. He says, um, the parable that we read, that um, God did not remove iniquity. He left it to, to, to remain there, that it can purify our character. As we go through temptations and trials, we have to know that these iniquities and these temptations that, they are, that we are facing, they are perfectizing our character, that our character will be fit for heaven. We need to pray that God will perfectize our character, that our character will be fit for heaven. Uh, because I don't have a lot of time, I could have explained much more clearer to you, but I encourage you to go and read um, Deserve Ages, page 79, this is also page 758, and go and read Patriots and Prophets, chapter 1, so that you can really understand what was really happening in heaven. Um, let's pray to close. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, we want to thank you because you came to the earth to prove to the world that you are so loving and so merciful. After all, Lucifer was lying to the angels, portraying, to, portraying your character as someone unjust, as your laws unjust, but we know that your laws and your commandments, they are so sweet and so loving. Lord, we want to pray that even in our lives, we'll be able to view you, Lord, as a loving God. And that through our living, through our day-to-day -day living, as angels are when other people from other worlds, they are looking at us. They may be able to see your character. And that our character will, at the end, be good enough that we'll be able to fit for heaven. Thank you, Lord, for telling us this um, information. I want to pray that you help um, the congregation, that they'll be able to go and study for themselves. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen to the church. Amen. Um, Isaiah, uh, Psalms 119 verse 2 says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Do you think that could I have been blessed here? Uh, do you think that you have been filled with more knowledge? Amen. Uh, we'll now go to, uh, can I invite Lucy back up so we sing hymn number two, uh, 625. Can you rise as we sing, please?
It is God's desire that we should be lifted up to a higher ground. Do you think so, sir? Um, we will now go to Michael as he will have his sermon entitled God's Desire. Um, good, morning, good morning, church. Good morning. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, do we have our Bibles? Yes. Um, can I see that we have our Bibles? Yeah. Okay. Um, if we could turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5 to 7. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 7. And when you get to the book of Proverbs chapter 3, if you could say Amen. amen. Okay. And um, if we could read together Proverbs chapter 3, starting from verse 5 to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be no wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. So at this time, um, um, we're not here to hear um, the opinions of, um, of me or of any man. As we see, um, according to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, that we should put our trust in who? Um, church, who are we putting our trust in? Okay. So, and just, um, if we could also turn to... Um, John chapter 15, that's John chapter 15. Um, are we in John chapter 15? Okay, and I'll be reading from verse 4 and verse 5. And verse 4 reads, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit from itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. So as we are about to get in this message, we can see that um, there is nothing that we can do without Christ. So at this time, um, I'm just going to ask us um, if we could kneel and if we could uh, pray for ourselves. So if we could kneel and pray for ourselves for one minute, and after that we'll get into straight into the message. Um, let us pray. Um, our Heavenly Father, Lord in heaven, um, Lord, as you are about to use, as you are about to listen to your word, Lord, please, Lord, speak through me. As Lord, I'm not here to represent myself, Lord, but Lord, I'm here to represent you. Please, Father, I plead with you in this place, at this moment in time, that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, may be filled in this place. Lord, there is nothing that none of us can do. Please cover us with your blood and lead us into the way of righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us and for sparing us another day that we can finish the work. Lord, help me, Lord. I need you more than ever before, Father. 
please use me, Lord. In all these things I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, the title of our message um, is uh, God's Desire. If we could turn our Bibles to the book of James, chapter 1. That is James, chapter 1. And James is the book after... What's the book before James? So we have Hebrews and James. And when you get to the book of James, chapter 1, if you could say, Amen. Okay. So, so we'll read um, James, chapter 1, starting from verse 2 to verse 15. So I will read verse 2, you guys will read verse 3, I will read verse 4 to verse 15, and verse 15 we'll read it together. Did we get that? Okay. I'm starting from verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And together, verse 15, when he conceived, it shall bring forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. You see, oftentimes when we talk about temptation, we always look at the negative side. Is that true? We always, we always think, ah, 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 I'm tempted. Lord, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? But if we go back to verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy for when ye fall into diverse temptation. Now, to be honest with ourselves, how many of us count it all joy when we fall into temptations? Do we find it a very joyful experience? Okay. And if we could, um, there's a very similar text as well in Romans chapter 5 from verse 2 to 8. If we could turn to Romans chapter 5 from verse 2 to 8. And when we get to Romans, if we can say amen. Okay? So I'll be reading starting from verse 2 to verse 8. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet per adventure for a good man will some even dare to die. And verse 8, if we could read it together. But God commanded his love. 
toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And going back to verse 3, and it says, not only so, but we what? Glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Now, I have a question for you guys. How do we overcome temptation? And if you remember what Jeremiah David said the other day, when someone asked a question, what do they expect? An answer. So how do we overcome temptation? We? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Mm -hmm. And and as we know, if we go to uh, Matthew chapter four, verse four, Matthew chapter four, verse four, a very familiar text. We should all know this. Are we there together? Okay. But he answered and said, it is, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of And what was the question I asked before, before the text? How do we overcome temptation? So we see here that the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now I want you to think for a minute. In every decision that you make in life, is it based on the word of God? In every decision, this morning, when you woke up, did you thank God for sparing your life? This is more serious than we think. Now, I want us to find us, I want, uh, this is very interesting. I want us to actually go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. This is very interesting. I want, I want us to see something. I want us to see something. And this was before the fall. And God, are we there together? Okay. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea.